Scrappy Peeps. Thanks for joining me today. Today this is a sketch that I shared with Christy for her collaboration and this is the layout that I uh, created based on my sketch and you can hop over to Christy's YouTube channel and see what she did with this sketch. So the sketch calls for two stacked V's and two pictures and originally the sketch went on the horizontal. I have these two pictures. Uh, one is of my son and his coach and the other is of the medals that he earned um, at our most recent age group championships meet and he was the high point winner and I wanted to document that. It was kind of a special um, award because this was the coach's last age group meet with this team. So I pulled out the you rock collection um, from Coco Vanilla Studio, and that's the all I work with actually in on the, for this particular layout. And I uh, hand drew, free drew the uh, V's that were going to be down the center of the page. I knew I wanted that variegated or ombre. Um, background piece and so I chose these two darker colors to complement that and uh, really work with drawing your eye across the page uh, sort of in the same manner as the ombre actually so my original intent had been to follow the sketch as it was um, with the pictures down towards the bottom third of the layout and the pictures nested in the bottom of that V and I knew I had wanted when I chose the the papers that I was going to use I knew I had wanted the darker pattern paper or the black stars to be the thinner of the two V's, uh, just as the sketch had called for the thinner of the two V's. So I just, I, basically all I did was I used the same template of the V, that I, the big V, and then drew a slightly smaller V just using my ruler and exacto blade to cut those out. And I'm going to play here for a little bit with the um, direction of the paper and which way I want that ombre to go, either moving across the page, down the page, or from top to bottom down the page. And I settle on not this. <laughs> um, so you can see I'm working with the sketch there and I really decided that I liked the pictures stacked better. Um, it just made much more sense because of the the way that I've cut the bodies off of the top of them and the way that the um, ribbons are cut at the top. If I were to put them side by side, the pictures have a funny movement to them, so they were better stacked this way, um, and the ombre effect or the variegation, whatever you want to call it, worked better for the pattern papers. So I now um, dig through all the various elements that I have of this collection. I have the chipboard pieces, and I have some stickers, and I have some cut-aparts, and I um, set to town to embellish this layout. I really liked these chipboard arrows, and I like the way that the arrows draw attention to um, the pictures and guide your eye down to the center there, because there is kind of a a fair amount of movement with the V actually pointing away from the pictures. So the the arrows helped bring that focus into the pictures, which are the focal point of the story there. So I'd initially started with that multicolored border down the side there, and I um, my eye was drawn to these stars, and so I decided to fussy cut a bunch of them out. And I sped this up because um, you don't need to see me fussy cut each and every one of these out. So I do cut three of them out, um, and our team colors are red and blue, and so you can see he's wearing a blue parka and um, a red shirt so it worked perfectly for the collection and I pulled out and focused on those blues and reds in the collection um, to go with th these particular pictures and um, the sketch doesn't actually call for elements off to, si to the side but it needed something um, so I, I wanted to fill some of that white space that's right there and so I chose a few of the ephemera um, cut stars to go with the the fussy cut star there uh, and that little tag that said awesome 
I also found uh, the little circle that said, wow, because this was quite an accomplishment. And you'll see that chipboard piece that's hanging off the edge there that I just pushed off. So I've kind of found the basic um, elements that I want. So I decide that it's time to commit and stick these down. Um, and I stick the black one down first and rub it down nice and good because that's where I think I want it. The only problem is is <laughs> I didn't put them close enough. I, I, it ended up being too far away. And uh, I liked where the darker one, where the, the wider V was relative to the edge of the page. So of course I have to pick up the V that I smoothed out and weighed out and made sure was sitting very nicely on the paper. Fortunately, that little strip there was just paper um, stuck to adhesive stuck to the paper, and so I was able to get it up without much uh, ripping of the background paper. Uh, the problem is, is that in the removing of it, it did stretch the paper out a little bit, so you'll see that I do have to trim off um, a little edge, but it all worked out in the end, and it really wasn't. It worked po positively, favorably, uh, but not negatively. So there I just trimmed off the edge and uh, rearranged the pictures so that I can continue to build the rest of this layout. I decided that I wanted to back the photos. Uh, there was a lot of movement to the page and by backing the photos I was able to unify things a little bit um, and so originally I wanted to skew the pictures a little bit but by putting them on this one piece I uh, had to stack them top to bottom in order to have an even frame around the, the pictures there. So those are the fussy cut stars that I cut out earlier and I rearranged the, that cluster up at the top there. I decide not to overlap the awesome banner over the stars because it just sort of widens the cluster a little bit. Um, there's merits to both, but you, you also did lose the, the definition of the star the way that I had them overlapping. And then I uh, rearrange my arrows just as they were earlier and then play with this little cluster down here uh, below the pictures. And I like clusters of three and wanted something else uh, at the bottom to go with my third element with that cluster. Um, and I was actually thinking that that third star, it was too proportionally the same size and I wanted something smaller. And I'd used all the chipboard stars that were gonna coordinate. So I just cut the innard out of this particular star, which gave me a smaller star and worked perfectly. So you can see how with the sketch tilted, rotated, that was going to work nicely for me. So then I have this ephemera pack and I think, well, I've got it, might as well use it, <laughs> see what works. And I shuffle through all of that and to, to find something that may work. And I believe I find a few more stars, but other than that, there really wasn't a whole lot in the color scheme that I had chosen that was going to work. So I, I'm not sure about that colored strip down the border there. There's colors in it that don't tie into the rest of the layout. So I, I pushed that off to the side, but I, I did, did decide to commit to these stars and stuck those down. Um, I'm curious to see if Christy puts in an element uh, to close out that white space as well. I wanted this wow popped up, so I used some foam adhesive and just popped that up for a little bit of dimension on the page. Uh, normally I would have popped one of the two pictures, uh, but it, the depth was too funny there. So I uh, decided that I'm going to fussy cut that star and I just quickly went through that, sped through that as well. Um, and uh, I mostly sped through that because I don't actually end up using this star. It's way too big of an element, um, but I did save it so that I could use it on another project. Um, and you'll see in a minute that I decide that the red, there isn't enough red 
to complete the layout. And so I take the red off altogether and just go with the different variegations of that sort of aqua-y blue. I've pulled us some letters here that come from, I want to say these are from an old Coco Daisy kit that I had. And they work perfectly working in that same hue color that I have. Um, and I, I just spell out high point. And I could have put winner, but winner was not going to be the same width as high and point. And so in order to create that same width, I just used a pen and wrote in winner myself. Um, you'll see in a minute that I do write it down in pencil first so that I can get the spacing right and so that I can make it straight because I do have this tendency to write downhill. And that way I could erase the, the trial letters that I used to make it fit. I'm going to stick down the rest of my embellishments though to see how much space that I actually have underneath high point to write winner. So I'm just going to glue these stars down with my Prima planner pen. And there's the pencil so that I can write winner. Um, I do end up changing where that uh, little chipboard white piece towards the edge of the paper is there. I didn't like it and I pulled it in next to high to give a little bit of a contrasting direction because the V goes the other way and um, sort of sim pulls some symmetry into the layout. So that is my interpretation of my own sketch. Please stop by over at Christy's uh, YouTube channel and see how she played along. Thanks, Christy, for inviting me to, to participate today. Enjoy these close-ups, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them down below. Thanks for stopping in today. Take care.